Hello friends, my name is Sanskriti. I'm currently doing research in applied sciences and biotechnology. I've always wanted to make biology easy for students. YouTube has given me a great platform to share my knowledge. So here we go guys. I'm going to talk about transport in plants today. Um, what does transport mean? Carrying something from one place to another. What do we need to survive? We need energy that comes from food. If you're hungry, all you got to do is ride up to Domino's to get food. Can plants do that? No, they cannot move. There has to be another way out. They have to cook. They can't be lazy like us. So cooking, for cooking, they need secret ingredients. This is where the movement of particles comes into scene. So the topics I'm going to cover in this video are means of transports, diffusion, water relations, that is osmotic potential, water potential, plasmolysis, imbibition. And in my coming video, I'm going to talk about long distance transport of water, transpiration, uptake and transport of mineral nutrients, flow and transport, source to sink. So how does transport occurs in humans? Humans, can you guess? It is with this organ. This is called human heart. Everybody would have seen it. And this picture looks a little difficult having so many labels, but we gotta keep it simple and it's gonna be this way for now. So heart pumps the blood and the blood is the carrier of everything. Either you consider it glucose or water or all the minerals, nutrients, everything is carried, oxygen is carried by heart, by blood and heart helps for the transport. So what does plant need? What are the secret ingredients for making food? They are gases, minerals, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, phosphorus. So out of which gases they get from the atmosphere around them and minerals they come from soil that is nitrogen sulfur phosphorus all are uptaken from the soil carbon that comes from carbon dioxide hydrogen comes from water oxygen also comes from water that is uptaken by the roots so these are the, all the things that the plant needs for cooking so there are basically three types of plants transport that will come into scene in plants one is diffusion the other one is facilitated diffusion and the last one is active transport. Diffusion is a very common term which you would have heard. So, and everybody knows the definition that is a movement of particles from high concentration to low concentration. Let's take a look upon this picture. Here the molecules are present in higher concentration and they just go without any energy requirement to the region of their lower concentration. The common example is of incense stick which we have heard from the childhood. There is no energy required and this is a slow process. And the movement is of solute particles. The point to be remembered here is there is no membrane separating them. Factors affecting diffusion are the concentration gradient. So the movement would be from higher concentration particles to the region of lower concentration. If the temperature, temperature is higher then the mobility would be more. The molecules would be having lot of energy and they would be going in many directions. If pressure is high, the movement would be lower. And it depends on the nature of the particle. If the particle is big in size, the movement would be slow, slow, slow. If the particle is smaller in size, it would go swing. So there is another type of diffusion that plants use is facilitated diffusion. Facilitated diffusion, the point to be noted here is they occur only through membrane proteins. So membranes have got proteins which allow the movement of hydrophilic particles which do not require energy. There is no energy requirement in facilitated diffusion. The most common examples for it are uh, aquaporins, channels and porins. They allow the movement of ions, molecules, water particles to go without any energy input. The methods that take up that are used in facilitated diffusion are three methods, uniport, symport and antiport. Uniport is the 
protein would allow the movement of particles from the region of their higher concentration to the region of their lower concentration without any energy. Symphoter, if there is a triangle which has to go, but it cannot go by itself. It needs another molecule which would help. If the two of them are present, then only they can pass this barrier. Antiport is the other way opposite to the symphoter. They go in same direction. Here they have to go in opposite direction. If there is one triangle molecule present here, it has to enter. It cannot. But if it is clubbed with a square, then only the two can move in the opposite directions. One can enter and one can leave the cell. So there are basically two types of passive transports. That is diffusion and facilitated diffusion. Uh, diffusion occurs across without any involvement of energy passive like it says passive no energy requirement facilitated across occurs across through proteins membrane proteins are necessary for it best examples are porins and channels so let's take a look upon active transport now it is very sensitive and highly specific and this required this also requires proteins for transfer the most example, common example for active transport would be pumps. Pumps. So let's take a look upon how do pumps work. ATP is the energy molecule in the biological systems. It comes, it gives energy to proton, proton pumps and this breaks into ADP and inorganic phosphate. And this breakage releases some energy. That energy is utilized by this pump to pump this molecule from its lower concentration to higher concentration do note this is against the concentration gradient by pumps and th the limiting factor here would be when all the proteins are saturated there won't be any movement like this would be the maximum movement allowed so let's take a look upon the comparison table of simple diffusion facilitated diffusion and active transport in simple diffusion the movement is from higher concentration to lower concentration higher concentration to lower concentration but here it's from lower concentration to higher concentration in simple diffusion no energy in facilitated diffusion no energy but in active transport it is required which is atp no proteins are needed for the transport through simple diffusion but here the proteins are required that are channels and porins etc but for transport here the pumps are required and the movement continues till the equilibrium is reached but here if all the proteins membrane proteins are involved in transfer then further movement is not possible until the proteins get free and transfer the another molecule likewise same in the active transport so diffusion is very non-selective facilitated diffusion is selective comparatively and this is highly selective so to make it easy i've made these pictures here so simple diffusion is like floating the molecules would go from higher concentration to lower concentration they don't need any energy input and they are not selective anybody can swim and reach anywhere but for facilitated diffusion, like this tube is an example of the channel or pump, like it helps this molecule to go down the concentration gradient with no energy input. But here in active transport, this motorboat is the pump, which takes up energy from the fuel, runs it, it can go against the concentration gradient as well. So now how does water move up the plant? As we know, everything falls down. Even Newton's apple falls down from the top to bottom in the gravity. How does the water move against the gravity? That's the thing. So let me put it this way. If you have to go from one place to another, what mode would you choose, either bus or flight? For selecting one of these, you have to know what is the distance between the place. If it is, you have to go from Delhi to Noida, then the answer would be bus but if you have to go from delhi to singapore you would not choose bus it has to be flight likewise plants have also decided the modes of transport for different for shorter distances and different for longer distances for short today i'm going to discuss about the shorter distances one that is diffusion which i've already discussed now the remaining ones are plasmolysis sorry plasmolysis osmosis imbibition 
and in the coming video i'm going to discuss about root pressure and transpiration pull so osmosis osmosis is water diffuses from its region of higher concentration to its lower concentration through a semi permeable membrane so osmosis occurs across the membrane most of the people get confused with this concept it is thought that it is opposite to diffusion so if diffusion means movement of particles from higher concentration to lower concentration it should be the other way around from lower concentration to higher concentration at least this is what i thought when i was a student so but that is not at all true osmosis occurs across a semi permeable membrane which means the membrane does not allow transfer of solute particles it allows transfer only of water particles only water can move and not the solute solute cannot move so let's take a look upon the diagram uh, this is a container where we filled water and placed a semi permeable membrane then we added less sugar on this side and more sugar on this side what happens is these red molecules are the sugar molecules and this membrane these molecules cannot cross only molecules that can cross are the water ones the blue ones so when the sugar concentration is higher on this side then the water molecules are higher on this side so water molecules have to go from their higher concentration to their lower concentration so the movement occurs this way but this cannot come back so the ultimate thing that happens is the volume goes down on this side and increases on this side of the membrane remember only water molecules pass sugar molecules do not and to stop this process of osmosis we have to apply a pressure on this place so that this molecules do not enter this membrane so that pressure is called as osmotic pressure external pressure applied to prevent the diffusion of water and this pressure depends upon the solute concentration more is the sugar on this side more will be the pressure we need to apply because the water molecules would be coming with more intensity so basically there are three types of solutions isotonic hypotonic and hypertonic so what happens in isotonic solution is solute concentration of external solution is equal to the concentration inside the cytoplasm so suppose this is the cell inside concentration of solutes is same as the concentration outside the cell so there is movement of water molecules but it is equally the number of molecules that would move out would be same as number of molecules moving into the cell so the condition of the size like the size of the cell does not change but for hypotonic solution the solute concentration in the cytoplasm is greater than the concentration of the external and here comes the membrane so the water molecules would move from outside to inside the cell and more molecules would be moving outside to inside and less number of molecules would be moving outside so at the end result is the cell swells up in the hypotonic solution and now comes up to hypertonic solution so here what happens is the solute concentration of the external solution is greater than the concentration inside the cytoplasm so the water molecules have to go out of the cell and what happens as a result is the cell shrinks in the hypertonic solutions what is plasmolysis plasmolysis is when the cell is kept in hypertonic solution so the water moves out of the cell and when the water has moved out of the cell the cell membrane shrinks away from the cell wall and this condition is called as plasmolysis uh, what when it is the other way around when it is kept in the hypotonic solution the water enters the cell and builds up the pressure against the cell wall and pushes it this pressure is called turgor pressure and the cell enlarges and this cell is called a turgid cell as you can see here what is imbibition imbibition uh, the most common example which people know is in rainy seasons the door of the houses wooden doors basically swell up the reason is they absorb water and they absorb water from the atmosphere and in the direct contact and they swell up so this is imbibition is diffusion in which water is absorbed by solids 
causing them enormously increase in volume. Imbibition is also along the concentration gradient because in wood there is less water when you compare it with the atmosphere during the rainy season. Swelling up of raisin is also an example of that when it is soaked in water. So let's take a look short quiz. Cells in dilute solution, what do they become? They become turgid. Cells in the same concentration solution do not change in volume. No change. And cells in con concentrated solution becomes flaccid. And what happens to the cells when they are kept in much more concentrated solution? They become plasmolized. So friends, if you have any doubt, you can leave that up in the comment section. And if you want anything more information, you can just leave them as well. Thank you. Do share it with your friends if you've found it informative. Thank you.